I've had a couple people ask me to do a video on indirect percussion. I got a piece of spall I knocked off of a large piece of buffalo, and I'm gonna use a hollow bopper made out of PVC pipe and a gas empty cap on it to thin it down to do the uh, indirect percussion. Uh, first of all, I don't do indirect percussion. I, I'm learning to do it, but it's the best I've seen to make super thin stuff, but it's a little slow for me because I don't have to make super thin stuff and uh, I need to make my stuff as fast as I can. The faster I make it, the more money I make. So I got the opportunity to watch, to me, I think the best person out there that does it is Jason Newman. And uh, I got to go to Jason Newman's house and sit down by him and talk to him and, and watch him. And uh, I have some blades he's made that are just incredible. Uh, I never seen blades at the, uh, and he's great. So why I'm saying this is Jason has videos on YouTube on how to do this. So I don't know why I'm, I'm sitting there showing you either, but I've had several of you to ask me if I would do one, and I said, sure, I'd be glad to. But I, I'm learning this, what I'm showing you, I've learned from Jason Newman. And uh, once again, I think he's the best out there. A lot of people doing it, and I'm sure it's a lot of videos on it. And, so another reason I'm doing a video is not that Jason uh, will not share this information because I had to ask him to find out after I watched his videos and even watched him in person was what does his tools look like on the end. And a lot of videos don't explain that or they don't show it. It's not because they don't want to, they just don't think about it. Or they think you can see it in the video. But uh, maybe you can, and I'm just not sharp enough to pick up on it. But anyway, I'm going to try to explain that uh, to where you'll know what I'm talking about when I get this pig for out ready, ready for indirect percussion. Also, you don't have to thin this down like I'm doing it. You can do this with indirect percussion. And the reason I'm not doing that is because it's sure enough slow when you take a thick piece and you're working with indirect percussion and trying to to work it down to make something out of it. So what Jason does and what I like to do is get it about as thin as you can get it doing percussion work and uh, then take the indirect step and go with it from there. So I'm working this down, trying to get it thin. Kind of a sad day today. I got on my, my old wore out sweater, so don't laugh at it. It's cold. Uh, when it gets 40 degrees here and it's wet and the wind's blowing, that's cold. Now, I know we don't live up where we get snow where a lot of you guys do, and y'all say we don't understand cold, and you're right, but we're not used to it. So it's about 30, 34 right now, and the wind's blowing in my shop. I don't my shop's open. I have no doors in it at all. It's an old barn. I converted it into a shop. And, uh, it's cold. That's all I can say. It's cold to me. It might not be to you. But uh, where I was going with this is kind of sad because I, I fixed my dog pen up and put a light bulb in there. And, and I put a heater later on in there for my bullfrog dog. I got a dog that will tree and hunt bullfrogs. And he knows that the season's over with. When winter gets here, there's nothing for him to do, and he's bored. He wants to get out in them bayous and, and uh, mud holes and hunt them frogs. But uh, he'll get over it. But he's kind of pouting today. Uh, I might have told some of y'all this one time. Somebody asked, so how does a dog hunt frogs? Well, he can't stand a bullfrog, and he's going to go after him and get him. So I got a dip net, and I just got a like a bungee cord and a strap, and I can strap it with Velcro onto his leg, his front leg. And when he swims, he'll swim up behind that frog in the water and keep him up in that dip net and bring him to me. And uh, that worked pretty good for a long time. 
But them frogs kind of got smart for that. Got a little smart for that. And uh, they got where they dive under water and stay under water a long time where they couldn't hold their breath that long. And uh, as a frog could, so I got him a scuba diving outfit with the tanks and everything. And uh, you could hear him when he's on trail, when he's right behind one of them frogs swimming after him under water. Because when those bubbles come up and burst, the bubbles will come to the top of the water as you're aware of from the oxygen being released. And when they burst, you can hear them go, roof, roof. And that's his bark. And I know he's, I know he's after a good one. And sure enough, in a little while, he'll surface up and have that frog caught in that dip there. But anyway, he's not too happy right now because he knows frog season's over with and he ain't gonna have nothing to do this winter. Uh, I might train him to hunt ducks so he has something to do in the wintertime, but the problem is I don't duck hunt. But I might could loan him somebody that does and they might could get him to give him a wet suit that you can keep warm, pump warm water in or something. He might go under the water and grab them ducks while they're swimming and pull them under and drown them. Who knows? He's a good dog, I know that. All right, I'm not talking while I'm reducing this about anything but bull, bull stuff, uh, because I thin, I've got five or six videos on thinning points and I'm stepping down and telling you what I'm doing. And I'm trying to get this one done fast. So, no need in explaining to you what I'm doing. All you gotta do is go back and watch one of the other videos and you'll see. But, um, okay, this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna do this little slide right here a little bit and kind of shape it up, so. get it knocked out before I start. There it goes. Okay, now, first off, I'm going to show you the one I'm going to use when it's thicker material and I'm working with thicker material. This is probably a quarter inch round copper bar or rod, whatever. And this is what I want to tell you about. I always wondered what the tip of their tool looks like. You can't tell when they're working with it. So Jason told me, he said, he said there's a double bevel. It's sort of like a 45 on this side. And then it comes up like a 45 on that side. About, uh, this is like three quarters. That's like a quarter of the thickness. And this way, when he's got it down like this, he sees the end of this double bevel, and he knows to put it right there on the edge of the rock. If this makes sense, I'm trying to see which way to show it best in the phone. But he'll set it right there where that double bevel starts. So when he's looking at it this way, that's the double bevel. That's the way you would be looking at it. He sets the rock right there where the edge of that bevel starts, and that's when he hits it. So this is made for uh, like thinning from the thick stuff down. Uh, this is a little thin to use this on, but I'm gonna go ahead and strike with it. And the other thing I do is I just kind of raise the edge of my old big stomach cup and this right leg, I got about six inches higher than my other one. And when I bend over, it puts pressure on that. It's not going anywhere. So let me see if I can find a place I need to sure enough take something big off of and I'll show you how this will work. See if we can get it to work. I'm gonna set it right here on this. We'll hit down, and it came out right through there. Now I'm gonna move over here. 
And that one went up through there. Now let me come back across. I need to make me a little platform to come back across on it. And this is thick enough that I'll do good here on this one. And I got me a little isolated platform set up right here. I'm gonna grind it and I'm gonna set it on it like that. Hold it in, come down and hit. And I was hoping I could catch it and I did. And there it goes going off. Now I'm gonna try to come across the other way and meet with it. Meet them in the middle. Once again, I do not do this a lot. I wish I'd learned this way to start with. Kind of hard teaching old dog new tricks, but I recommend it to anybody learning the flint nap is learn indirect. If you want to make, if you want to make some fine stuff without having to saw it and take uh, sawed slabs and grind it down with diamond wheels to get it good and thin, you can do it. Uh, Super thin with indirect percussion. Woo! Got my hammer on my toe. Roll off my tabletop. Okay, now. I'm gonna get this joker seated in good. I'm gonna come, try to come back across and meet it. Ooh, that one shot almost all the way to the other side. I'd like to run it. Let's see if I can catch this one. That one went halfway. It did good. Now, this is, like I say, this is too big. Almost for it to be in this thin. And uh, that one run across and did good. So I'm going to go to the one that I use when it's this size. This is the thing I wanted to show you. Just a little short piece of copper sticking out of this rod. And if you look, you can see that bevel. See how it's going on a 45? And then here's the bevel going the other way. And I need to clean this up with my file, get all the burrs off of it, kind of all the dings out of it, get it good and slick. Okay, now, I'm going to put this one under my stomach right here. you got to have a little belly on you to be able to do this now. And I'm going to hold this leg up higher than this one. And when I lean over, that's tight. It's real tight. I don't have to fool with no belts or nothing like that. That's the advantage of being a big boy. All right, now, I'm going to take this lightweight billet, and I'm going to see what happens. I might go to a heavy one. I'm going to go down there and kind of do me a little test, test area. And uh, that did pretty good. I'm going to try it a couple more times. I'm having to hit it a little harder than I want to. But it's, it moved it off and cleaned it up good. So I think I'm going to stick with it for right now. Right now I'm just sitting up to the platform. Switch to a little heavy one. Oh yeah, that's a lot, lot of difference. A lot of difference. I'm too busy concentrating on getting this tool seated right. I'm not looking in the camera. And I just realized that, and I looked up. I hope it's showing up. I'll look on this one to see if I, I've got it uh, in the camera where you can see it. All right, I've got a high spot right here. I'm going to try to come across and remove it. That 
That plate went three quarters of the way across. And I did not look up in the camera to see as I said I was, so I'm gonna do it this time. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. This one got a hinge in it, I got it out. I thought I could just pop through it. The hinge is right on the edge. You can just kind of get up a little high on your platform and hit straight down. Now, here's another thing while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna tell you about this tool here, this method. You, when you're using this, sometimes you get a low area in the middle of the point or knife plate or whatever you make it. And uh, by that, I mean, that instead of a curved convexity, you'll have a low area like I'm, I'm getting right here. I don't know if you can see it in this. And you don't want that when you hit on it, you, you need it to be sort of rounded. And while I'm thinking about it, I'll share with you how to do that and how to correct that with the indirect. But what you want to do, if you've got it like that, I'm looking for an area where it's like that. Here's one right here. Set it right here and hit this way. I'm gonna come and hit my leg when I come down. See, I'm hitting my leg. And what that does, that takes just little bitty flakes like pressure flaking, and it'll start giving you convexity on that side. And it's amazing how fast that convexity will build up. And you can see I'm, I'm, I'm coming just like this. If I follow through, I hit my leg. Now, if I want to move a good long flake, I hit this way. I drive down and follow through that way. So I'm doing just the opposite here. Just trying to trim. I'm trimming the edge back. It's going to give me a little rollover on the, where it starts going, a little convexity. I can't say convexity too good. Word don't want to come out of my mouth right. All right, now I'm gonna come through here with this. And you can also do it with your, with a billet like this, or a pressure flaker. See, I'm hitting this way. Just go down and strike over it some. All right, I'm gonna look at it. And I, I think I got a pretty good spot right here where I can run one at least halfway across. See what we can get out of it. Now see, I hit that way on that one. And this one run all the way across, not all the way across, I shouldn't have said that, but almost all the way across. He feathered out about a quarter of an inch before it went across. And man, it's really thinning that air right in there extremely well. So let's try and load one next to it. That one went almost the same distance. Let's try another one. This is where I built the convexity up right here. And see it worked good. It run a good flake off. There's another one coming off good. There's an old saying in flint napping that you cannot nap air. A-I-R, air. So what happens, I'm talking about building this convexity up. If you have an area like this right here, and this part here is, is higher than this under here, and you hit this off, it's just gonna go right here or it's gonna hinge because there's nothing but air right there. So you need to move this back and give it convexity. So when you chip, it's got a ridge to follow up or, or a smooth slope going up. Also, I like this for thinning the base. This method is real good for thinning your base without breaking your point. Because uh, you're putting it perfect on there, you're not worried about uh, hitting too high up or, or whatever you'll call it, hitting on an angle. Just works good for thinning your base. This is real good for uh, making uh, points with real deep notches like Calf Creek and stuff like that. By the way, I'm gonna do a video on punch notching. Uh, I'm not a punch notcher either, but I can do it. I don't do it often, because again, it's slower than other ways. 
but I've had people ask me about it in this video and ask me about it. So sometimes when somebody does a video and then somebody else does the same video, both of them will explain something that the other one didn't or might help you out in a different type of way. So I don't think you can have too many videos out there on any subject. Now when I get right here on this tip, look at that, I'm just barely tapping that dude and it's doing exactly what I want it to. And sometimes I don't hit straight in like that because I don't want it to overshoot. On the tip, I'll hit back like I was showing you a while ago. Kind of back towards me, I'll strike like this. Not quite as much, but I will strike towards me. It's just not as much angle. Now I'm going to grind and come back the other way. Tip's starting to look pretty good. I got a little high spot right here. Now it's gone. Now this is where I start pressure flaking. When I get it like this and isolating all of my preform real good. Cause I don't want to mess up in here at all. But I don't know if you can tell, but that's getting pretty thin. It's, when something, the edges go like this, you got a lot of curves and bends, it's kind of hard to tell how thin it is. It can be thin, but it just, your eyes are seeing all the rolls going around. So I'm going to sit here and pressure flake me some platform. Do a continuous platform right along here. I don't see no need an isolating one in this area. Yeah. Yeah. I have people that ask where to buy tools and stuff like this. If you can afford tools, you need to buy them uh, rather than waste your time making them. Uh, there's some good stuff out there, and I buy them from a lot of people, different tools. But uh, also, you can make your own tools just real simple. And when I started out, I didn't, I didn't have the money to buy no tools. There wasn't nobody making them, but I had the money. Uh, you had to make your own tools. Here's an old tool I made years ago. I think this was a broom handle. And I just drove a nail in it and ground it flat like that for notching. And I've had this tool for eons. But anyway, tools are easy to make. Especially if you using a deer antler for percussion. Okay, now I've got continuous platforms through here and I've got isolated platforms right up here on top. And I really need to move some good mass here which I'm doing, look at the flakes that's coming off. Now I'm gonna go down and try to get another good piece. I got a good isolated platform there and there's another good piece. Don't need to get quite as much off here, so I'm gonna kinda hit back towards me a little bit. Now I'm gonna make another platform right in here. This is still a little thicker than I want it. I'm chipping this way like I was talking about hitting towards my body. I'm chipping towards my body to make me a little convexity. Uh, a little slope on this side. Flake come off there. Nice one there. I think I'm gonna do one right in here. Really don't need it that much. Now this side's boogered up so It's got a couple good hinges in it. And I didn't 
probably, I might have mentioned them. I don't remember what I was saying when I was saying it, but when I was doing the percussion work, there's a crack on this side. In fact, it's like a little crystal pocket right there. And uh, I didn't take my time and prepare right. I thought I could get it out. As a result, ended up with, here you can see the light color, and that's where it was at. We ended up with a hinge here trying to get it out this way and there trying to get it out. So I'm going to have to be careful this time and make sure I set everything up right so I can get it out. So i got to have me a good little slope going up uphill on it. You can't nap there. You can swing through there pretty easy. Nothing gonna chip. <clears throat> All right, I gotta grind it real good. Now, it's still not as good as I want it to look. I've still got a bad little hole right there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to come right beside it and see if it'll go behind it. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Well, that's not set up good enough there. So anyway, all right, I'm going to knock this piece off right here right now and see what happened. It went behind it and took the bottom part of it out. If you can see this, the light area, I'm going to put pencil marks in it. It went this way and went behind it and took it out. Got a little bit right here. Now, this is not going to work here because this is still a hollow. We got like a little pond or a dimple in there like on a golf ball. So we're going to have to try to remove that by pressure flaking some platforms up here. I'm gonna come across this, this opposite side now. So I got a perfect platform set up for it. And that'll give me room to do the other side when I go back. It has the hinge in it. It'll make it work better for me. Set my tool right on the edge. Get down. I didn't catch that plate. The light not have caught that one. Try to run this in a pretty good way down through here. Whoop, something happened, I missed. Didn't, it slipped off the edge. I wasn't holding it good enough, that goes. Ooh, that's a good one there. When I said I wasn't holding it good enough, there's another good one. What I meant by that, I wasn't bringing pressure in this way. I just had it sitting there and when I hit it slipped off, I wasn't shoving. You need to put pressure coming into this thing for it to work. If you're just on the edge, it's going to slip off. Because when you hit it, it's going to shove it away from you. And I, and I make that mistake a lot by not holding it tight. All right, this side looks real good. Let's see if we can straighten this mess up over here where this head was at. I'll show you what we're trying to do when I get it set up here.
Okay, this, this, this side here is pretty good. This side's got some high spots and ridges in it and out of balance, so I'm gonna go through here and get on and knock a flake off and see what it looks like, then knock another one off and check it and see if everything's going the way I want it to. And if it is, just continue to go down through here. That one actually did better than I wanted it to. It kind of run over before I wanted to up under it, but uh, I'm going to go back back this way and knock one off. I think I need to do another one right here. Right there. Now I'm going to come back here. Wow. Took that hinge out. I hit the wards me to take the hinge out now. Cause I didn't want it to run far. I hit like this. I don't know if you noticed that or not. tapping on that end. I don't like to hit an end like that with a billet, okay? Try to thin this base from this side. I'm gonna straighten this dude up. Get the, uh, the angle's not right. See how it's curving around this way? I'm gonna bring the point around here and uh, do the final pass on it. Clean it up real good and do the final pass. Let's see, that's looking a lot better doing that. Maybe a little more. starting to shape up some. There's still got too much bevel right here. Mm. That looks a lot better. All right, I'm gonna make a continuous platform down this side here. I'm gonna go all the way down it, wherever I think I need to hit. Knock a thinning flake off. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we got here. I'm grinding that real good because I'm hoping this is going to be my last run of flakes. All right, I got one hit here, here, probably three times right in there. Did real good down that side. 
the two plates uh, right through here like this. This one uh, didn't run but a little ways here. But I'm gonna come back and get it out. It's not been a problem. And, and I'm gonna tell you why that happened. Let me tell you about holding it uh, tight against the end of your, your, your billet that you're striking with. I didn't have it tight enough against that edge. That's my biggest problem. That's why I need to practice this indirect percussion is because I forget to hold it tight, put pressure there. Now, if I just want to knock a little bit of piece off, that might be different. But when I'm trying to run a flake across there like I was on that one, you gotta put some pressure on it. And here again, I'll try to explain it to you. Uh, what I do with my billets just later. Oh, here it is. <laughs> All right, this is what I'm talking about. Shoving this piece, my, the, the rock into the copper tip right there. Putting some pressure on it when you shove it in there and not just lay it up there and don't have anything resisting against it. Being real careful on this end, not to overshoot it. pressure on it, see if I can come to the right and left of it and straighten it out. I think I'm going to go to the right first. It's going to be up here and hit, see if it'll straighten it out. There we go. Now all I got to do is run one right down the middle ways and it'll come right out. I got Probably 75, 80 percent of it out like that, and the rest of it's gonna come out this way. This is because I did that, I made this high up this way, so I'm gonna chip it back some and straighten it across. I don't think I need to take nothing off, I think I just need to level it up and make it straight across. It's a little thick on this side over here. Is, is great. This side has some, some high areas in it, and I'm gonna do a continuous row of pressure flakes down it like I did on the other side. If you remember, I bevel edge all the way down and just hit on it where I need to.
continue. A little roll over on both sides. I'm gonna grind them real good. And this is gonna finish this piece up. I'm gonna come down it and uh, wherever I think I need to, to hit, knock a piece off, I will. Now you gotta remember to put pressure on it, drive it off. Pressure on it, drive it off. Now then, I gotta be careful. So I'm gonna start hitting this way, up here on the tip. I'm gonna come and hit this way. And then maybe running right to the center, hitting like that. Doing just right. Probably should have braided right there, but I didn't. And I should have had, because it didn't do nothing but crush. I knew it, that's why I said it. Boy, this is getting thin. Back where it crushed at and try it again. There we go. This is the hardest part, this tip, because I don't want to overshoot it. Sometimes I don't get them to go halfway and it leaves a little ridge right in there. The angle is so important that you strike it on when you get down here. You want to go, I like them to go just a little further than halfway, but they need to at least go halfway. I don't know if you noticed what I did wrong that time or not. It's kind of hard to tell, but I hit twice right there. And the first time, I didn't hold any pressure on it at all. I was too busy thinking about uh, getting the right space on my tool there on the tip, getting it placed right to remember to push up against it like here. And uh, that's why nothing happened when I hit on it. Nothing's happening here and I'm pushing against it, but I'm trying to use the, the very pointed, I'm not getting up here big enough. I don't wanna get too big a bite on it. And that's what's going on. I'm just not getting in deep enough on it. I'm gonna do it this time with bust. There we go. That was it. I finally got deep enough. Okay, I'm gonna straighten this edge up and uh, let you look at it real quick and tell a little more about how thin it is. Uh, this is getting, you're losing the width on this thing, but you could run another pass down it and thin it one more time or maybe even two more times. I know Jason could. But the main thing I wanted to show you, I'm no expert at, uh, indirect or anything else uh but what's the, the tip of the tool when i would watch it on video i couldn't tell it i thought it was rounded like a baseball bat and some of them might be some of them might use theirs like that but i didn't, wasn't having the success i was having until i started putting a, a bevel on it like jason does and i've come a lot more successful at using this method and if I didn't have to make preforms to sell and I played to sell every day to pay my bills, I'd be out here every day doing indirect percussion playing with it. I just happen to be caught up right now for the holidays and I uh, got a little time to play around. The only time I do videos is when I'm caught up. First time in my life I've been caught up for the holidays and I blame it on the virus. 
I usually was working right up 10, 12 hours a day, right up to the day before Christmas. But uh, my business has been off because of the virus, not having that many nap ins and shows to go to. I've missed a lot of shows this year. So I had a lot of stuff made up and a lot of time to make it up. So when Christmas come around, I had about 50 knives already made up and finished and uh, a lot of other things I make. And so when I started getting orders, I wasn't have to stay down here to midnight trying to get it done and get it filled. And I still have probably three or four knives left if somebody wants for it for kind of a last minute Christmas present. I still got so send me a personal message and we'll uh, send you pictures of them, let you look at them and get them off the mail to you. I'm just so excited I'm not having to make anything all day long trying to get it out for Christmas. I'm not excited about the, the money end of it from, from this year's earnings. But at least I got a roof over my head and I'm eating three meals a day and the good Lord's taking care of me. Can't beat that with a hickory stick. It's a little thick in here. What I would do is pressure flake that off and make me a platform and run pressure flakes across it because I'm not good enough at indirect to keep hitting on it like this without breaking it sooner or later. But I can do it pressure flaking it and I can make it real thin and move all that out. But we're not gonna do that. We're going to try to indirect, because that's the way you learn. Let's see what I did wrong if I break it. And I'm going to use a different sanding tool this time. I got a real, real fine abrader. I don't want a real thick, coarse edge on there. Then it's just narrowing this thin. And that should make a little difference. I know Jason Newman talks about using a, a finer blader than most people do. Got yellow rift, I'm not hitting it hard enough. Probably won't break it. I'm just scared. <laughs> Whee, I got a few of them out. I'm gonna press flake the rest of them out. I, I just don't like it. I'm gonna probably throw this off to the side and beat up for 10 years. I find it in a bowl somewhere. And uh, so it really wouldn't matter if I did break it, but 
I do have probably 30 minutes time in it. When I'm doing a video, it takes longer. You can stop and explain what you're doing and set up and stuff like that. But uh, anyway. get pretty quiet when I'm serious about what I'm doing, not playing around. All right, we're going to call it, call it in. Hope that might have helped you with indirect percussion, like I say to the main thing I wanted to do is show you the, explain the, uh, how the bevels helped me on the end.